Hello and welcome to 2021's Career Virtual Night here at Leestown Middle School. I'm Mr. Ross with my co-host, Mr. Penrose, and we're here to tell you about exciting career opportunities and specialized programs that you have here in Lexington. Mr. Penrose, did you grow up always wanting to be a teacher? No, I think when I was like little, and now this is back in like the 1800s, I think, I wanted to be a paleontologist. A paleontologist? Yeah. What does a paleontologist do? I wanted to find dinosaurs. That's awesome, yeah, man. Right? You could like live in a van and go find dinosaur bones. Right in a van? It would have been perfect. Would've what been did you want to be? Well, th this is a little embarrassing, but when I grew up, I, I wanted to become like a six foot tall robot that could shoot laser beams yeah, out, right of out, of eyes, right right? out of my eyes. Right out of my eyes. Right out of my eyes. But, but UK told me that wasn't a major that they offered. It was it was a real bummer. So I had to switch my career choices That's and I changed. Awesome. I decided that I instead wanted to become a teacher. Oh, all right, excellent. Well, I believe today we're going to introduce you to some professionals. We're going to hear from some kids about what they want to be. We're going to hear from some adults around the community about what they do and how they got to where they are. So coming up next, you're going to see the hopes and the dreams of our current Chargers. Hello, I'm Antone. I'm in the sixth grade at Leastown Middle School. I'm interested in being a pilot. One day I want to be a pilot. Um, I wanted to be a pilot when I went to aviation camp and the next step for me is to go to flight academy. Hi, I'm Nicholas Wilson. I, I'm in the sixth grade at Beast Town Middle School. Something I inspired to be when I grew up is an actor. One of the reasons I want to do this is because well, it's something I truly enjoy. Some next steps for me are possibly taking an acting class, auditioning for the school play, and so many more. Hi, my name is Armani, and I'm in the seventh grade. My future career is to be a trauma surgeon. The reason why I chose to be a trauma surgeon is because it gives you a plan, and, it gives, and you get to do different types of surgeries every day. Some of the classes you'll take to, in order to be a trauma surgeon is biology, health and chemistry, physics, and calculus. Hello, my name is Avery Johnson. I'm in the eighth grade at Leeds Town. My dream job is to be an athletic trainer because my mom is an athletic trainer. So I would like to help others, make sure they're okay, they're not injured. And I'm into a lot of sports like basketball, football, and track. And we have an athletic trainer that checks others. So that is why I like to be an athletic trainer. Hello, I am Justin Perez. I am in the eighth grade. I am interested in being a mechanical engineer. I decided on being a mechanical engineer because I was inspired by my dad. My next step is for me is to start helping my dad with work. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Akaya Wade and I am an eighth grader at Lee's Town Middle. I'm interested in basketball. It motivates me to motivate others in every way I can. One day I want to be in the WNBA, but not just for the fame, but to motivate others so they can see that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. My brothers played basketball and being the only girl, I wanted to play too. Playing basketball motivates me, so I want to motivate others. A big step is looking for scholarship for college. It might be a rush, but you can achieve your goals at any age and any time. Hello, my name is Eli Gibson. I'm a seventh grader at Least Town Middle School. I'm interested in playing in the NFL because I'm a fullback on the Least Town Middle School football team. I want to get into the NFL, but before I do that, I need to take my part in the classroom and then I need to go to a trustworthy football high school and then to help me get a scholarship to a good college football program to help me get into the NFL. Hi, I'm Eva Arbor. I'm in the seventh grade at Least Town Middle. One day I want to be a kindergarten teacher. The next step for me is to find an educational job in high school to help me find more ways how to be a kindergarten teacher. Hi, Linda Bradley. Today I'm going to be talking about what I want to be when I graduate high school and how much he let go. 
when I graduated high school, I want to be a music producer. I want to be that because I love making music. I love making beats and stuff I like to do. And I'm gonna achieve that goal. I have to at least play one instrument, attend a good college, attend a university, and learn more about music and listen to music and learn how to make beats. Hello, I am Steven Sorosan. I am an eighth grader at Lee Sun Middle School. My dream job is is game development. My next step to get close to this goal is to go to the East Side Technical Center and take the big game development class. Hi, my name is Katie Rodriguez and I'm in eighth grade at Lee Sun. Um, my dream career is to be a fashion designer. I like this because I like to uh, go into the worldwide trend and help people to see what style they really want and to express themselves. Um, I would have to have four years of college uh, degree and have knowledge on clothing, accessories, and footwear. Also, I would have to take art theory and art history in, in high school. Hi, my name is Ava Rankin and I'm an 8th grader at Least Town Middle School and one of my dream jobs is becoming a dental hygienist. Um, one thing I have in my future life is I would like to be at the biomedical program at Frederick Douglass High School. Um, I want to focus on taking biomedical classes and tech classes and see where that leads me on later on in my future career. Hi, my name is Mary Clark and I'm the Assistant Director for WRFL 88.1 FM in the Office of Student Organizations and Activities at the University of Kentucky. My job falls within a couple of different career fields, the first being media since it is a radio station, but the second is also higher education because a big part of my job is advising and educating college students on how to run the radio station themselves. Um, so this job definitely did require a master's degree when I was applying for it, but it was not specific in what type of master's degree I needed to have. Um, so the degrees that I did have, that kind of led me to this job. Um, I had two bachelor's degrees, one in media arts and studies and one in art studio. Um, and then I went and worked at another radio station in town for a few years before going back for my master's. And I just finished up my master's in communication um, right before I got this job a few months ago. So regarding what my day looks like, um, every day is a little bit different, which makes the job fun. Um, but a big part of what I normally do is handle event logistics for concerts. So every aspect like booking hotels for bands and paying the bands and stuff like that. Um, I meet with students a lot, since that's a big part, is advising. Um, and then serving as the designated chief operator for the station, that makes me responsible for educating our programmers on policies relating to the Federal Communications Commission, so what you can and cannot say on air. Um, but really a big part of my job is contracts and paperwork and stuff like that. Um, but the most fun part is when I get to be on the radio myself and pick out music and make playlists. And, that's the heart of why I love radio. So all of that to say that radio is definitely still alive and well in 2021. Hey everybody, my name is Michael Tyree and I'm a plumber for the University of Kentucky. And being a plumber is just like a lot of the other trades, like an electrician or HVAC, uh, sheet metal, concrete work, just construction job in general. Uh, generally with plumbers though, you're gonna get a lot more dirty and probably going to get wet a lot as well. Um, in order to become a plumber, it's not really that hard. You just have to have the will to go to work and work hard. You got to show up every day and be dedicated to your job and willing to learn. Uh, with two years of plumbing experience um, underneath a licensed plumber, you can also take your exam and become a licensed plumber yourself, become a journeyman plumber. After two years of holding a journeyman license, you can then get your master license, which allows you to open your own plumbing business. Um, some of the skills you need to become a plumber are definitely being able to read a measuring tape, probably use a drill. You're gonna deal with a lot of pipe. That's pretty much all you do. Sometimes you use a little pipe wrench, and then on good days, or depending on how you feel, it could be a bad day. You get to use a big pipe wrench like this. 
But with that said, overall, you know, being a plumber is a really good job. And I think a lot of people overlook the trades and more people should look towards it because it is a great job and you can make a great career out of it. Happy plumbing, everybody. My name is Sean Pryor. Um, I'm a writer um, and I've written many books for a company called Capstone, which I'm sure some of those books are in your library. Um, books from like the Jake Maddox uh, line and uh, some scary graphics, graphic novels. Also written a book about the um, the lunch counter protests in Greensboro, North Carolina during the Civil Rights Movement. Um, so what I started doing back in 2007 was um, I started to you know learn how to write my own comics and then collaborated with artists to make my own independent comics and um, and from there I started to work with comic book companies and started publishing books that way and then from there. Um, a few years ago, I started to work uh, with companies like Capstone to write children's books, story books, prose books, um, sports novellas, graphic novels for them. And I've also uh, created books via Kickstarter, which is a crowdfunding uh, program. Um, there's no one way to create things. Um, like I said, I'm a writer, like so. When I say that, like I said, I create comic books and graphic novels and, and prose books and story books and stories of all kinds. Um, there's no one way to do this. And being able to write all these types of stories has given me the uh, opportunity to talk to kids at, kids at schools. Um, as a matter of fact, I was at a Lee's Town middle school back in July to talk, uh, talk with some kids about how, you know, how comics are made. And, but, um, I can't stress enough how awesome it is to be part of like this creative world and to work with artists, to work with, um, as a matter of fact, I've also worked with game companies to help um, write games um, for them, you know? So um, thank you for your time. Y'all have a great day and um, hopefully I'll see you soon. Hi guys, my name is T. Acri and I work for the University of Kentucky at the Center on Drugs and Alcohol Research or CDAR for short. Um, I am Technical Administrator 1, which is just a big fancy way of saying that I am an opioid researcher. Um, so there's a few different ways that you can be an opioid researcher. Uh, you can get down to the science of it and study the psychopharmacology of drugs like opioids and other substances that people may use. Or you can be on the other side of things, how I am, which is assisting folks who are in active addiction or in recovery from substance use, and in particular with um, opioids. So basically the types of skills that I use in my job is I always knew that I was a people person. I always knew that I was someone who really wanted to make a difference and really wanted to be helpful. And I was always interested in uh, the big things about drugs, like systems that um, may make someone want to use drugs or uh, the psychology behind why people may use drugs. So I ended up getting a undergraduate degree in psychology, an undergraduate degree in sociology, and a master's in social work. So that way I could kind of round out everything and get that whole people-oriented focus and things that I do. Um, What's really awesome about my job is the fact that I get to hear from people who are starting the recovery journey, as well as from people who are assisting those folks as they start the, that journey. And I've been in this field for about five years, and it's been absolute love and caring and really fighting for people who, who are ready to start their lives over and who are ready for a second chance. So thanks so much. Hi, my name is Alex Reese. I'm a comic book illustrator and artist for the webcomic Robin and Cat, um, which has been running for almost eight years now. I also do a lot of other freelance work, a lot of comic covers and illustrations um, and one-off stories through other publishers. But I also release my own books through my own publisher, Pizza King Publishing, and uh, let me just tell you a little bit about the art career. There's um, no like, 
formal way to get into it. It's it's a very passionate field. Um, you, yeah, there's no real way to say like how to get into it, other than to make it, create your work, and get it out into the eyes of the public, which is the the biggest challenge of the field. Um, yeah, it's not just drawing every day. You also have to send a lot of emails, read a lot of emails, um, talk to a lot of people that can get your work out into the public, but also creating your own opportunities when those people refuse or you get rejections. Uh, getting rejections is a very common thing in the comic world, uh, but that's when you create your own books and release them online. There's so many great ways, so many great opportunities to get your work out there uh, without a major publisher. But, uh, I'd like to thank you and uh, have a good day. Hello, my name is Sean Livingston, and I'm the Director of Research Services in the Special Collections Research Center at the University of Kentucky Libraries. I know that's a mouthful, but what that means is, is I'm a librarian, and so I help people find information. In my current job, I am learning also to be an archivist. And what that means is I help preserve the history of Kentucky, the history of University of Kentucky, and the history of a lot of different people we come into. And then the second part of that, I also help people access that material that we've stored. So it's actually a pretty rewarding career field to be in. If you're curious, um, you want to know about the world, or you just want to look at some really old stuff that's really cool, and you want to preserve it forever. So to get here, I had to go to college. I had four years of an undergraduate. I went to Transylvania University here in Lexington. And then I also went to graduate school at the University of Kentucky to get my degree in library science. And all that did is prepare me to interact with all the different documents we had and also help people access all those different documents so they can complete their research on time. I have a list of questions here that they, they've loved me to answer for you. And I think the one that's most is what skills that I use all the time. Um, I use my skills of critical thinking. I have to figure out what people really want when they ask a question. Sometimes the question they ask is not really what they want. I also have to use my reading skills a lot to ferret out information that may be here, maybe hidden in an entire book or an entire collection of people. And I also have to use my um, skills of just being persuasive and really interest people in that. I really hope this explains a lot about what I do. Hello, I'm Chef Ryan, the executive chef at the Lexington School, uh, and this is what it's like to be an executive chef. First of all, as you can see, it's dark. Executive chef day starts pretty early. Um, as executive chef, I'm the leader of my team. So the biggest thing is I'm the first one here and I'm the last one to leave. Uh, it's because I need to make sure that my team has all the support that they need to make sure our food service goes smoothly. Um, to be an executive chef, you can get a degree. I have a, an associate's degree in culinary arts, but also you can have several certifications through professional organizations that you can earn through apprenticeships. Um, I am required to have a food manager's license, uh, which I get through the health department in your local area, and then there are also national programs that you can get a certification for as well. Hey, welcome back. We're back from looking at the hopes and the dreams of our current students. Mr. Penrose, how do you think our students are going to get to achieve the dreams that they want? I think that they're probably going to have to go to college or technical school. Technical schools are really fantastic because it's a good reminder that you don't always have to go to college. In our next segment, you're going to see how our current teachers got to the point where they were and what universities that they went to.
we talked a lot about college, but how are individual students, what's their next step before college? So, because we're not going to send our middle school straight to college, we're going to go to high school next. And here in Lexington, we have a whole bunch of specialized programs. Mr. Penrose, what is a specialized program? Fayette County has a lot to offer. We have like things like pre-engineering, MSTC, Locust Trace. We have so many specialized programs. These kind of just like guide you to where you think you might want to go for college. Can I apply? Uh, I think it might be too late for us, Ross. Oh. I know. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. That MSTC program sounded like something I'd be really good at, though. It does. The robot. You're the robot within you. The robot, right. Yeah. In our next little segment, we're going to learn about the specialized programs and the offerings that we have here in Lexington for your students coming up in the next year or maybe the next two years. Now that you're thinking about career pathways, you may be interested in looking into some of the high school programs Fayette County has to offer. If you're a current 8th grader, the deadline to apply for these programs is October 7th, which is coming up soon. If you're a 6th or 7th grader, you probably want to learn about these programs now to make sure that you're in the right courses for the rest of middle school to set you up for success when you apply as an 8th grader. There's one general application for all of the programs. This is the link to the site. You can view the programs here and apply. You must sign up for an account though, so make sure you do that first. Let's get started looking at the programs. Lafayette High School has several programs. The pre-engineering program is a math and science based program. You can see here if you apply, they're going to be looking at your math and science test scores, GPAs, and teacher recommendations. But if you're into math and science, I would check out pre-engineering at Lafayette. Lafayette also has the School for the Creative and Performing Arts. You can see here that they offer lots of courses and performance opportunities in the area of art, music, dance, drama, and creative writing. Even if you don't take those classes in school, but you're very talented in your area, you can apply at SCAPA. Dunbar has the MSTC program. In order to apply, you do have to be in the ninth day nine on the Iowa assessments in math or science. So if you're very into math or science, check out their site. Bryan Station has several opportunities. Station Arts encourages student growth and offers lots of different areas, such as instrumental music, band, orchestra, guitar, keyboarding, vocal music. They have several choirs. They also have visual arts classes, drama, technical theater, dance, and media arts. So as an alternative to SCAPA, Bryan Station has lots to offer. Bryan Station also has the Academy of Information Technology. You can see here from this graphic that they offer lots of different certifications. Adobe Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Illustrator, and some Microsoft certifications. You can take cinematography, computer programming, or graphic design. So if you're very into technology, this academy is for you. Bryan Station High School also has the Spanish Immersion Program. Most students start Spanish Immersion in kindergarten. If you think you're interested in that, I would contact Bryan Station. They also have the Air Force Junior ROTC. This is a program that teaches the qualities of uh, citizenship through military values, but it does not mean that you have to enter the military after you've completed the program. Henry Clay High School has the Liberal Arts Academy. They have the Capstone Diploma. They also have the Army Junior ROTC. Again, ROTC is not a military recruitment program, but if you're interested in the Army, you can learn citizenship 
through the ROTC. Tage Creek High School has the International Baccalaureate Program. This is very heavy on research and writing. If you are in the Tate's Creek District, which means um, you would have gone to Southern or you would have gone to Tate's Creek Middle School, you can go ahead and apply. If you're out of the district, you need to make sure that you go through the enrollment checklist and then you can go to this link and register to see if you can get a spot in the IB program. STEAM Academy, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. STEAM is located on Georgetown Road. They have a brand new, beautiful school and they do lots of project-based learning. So if you are into that type of learning, STEAM could be for you. Frederick Douglass High School has lots of pathways. If you are districted to Frederick Douglass High School, once you're there as a freshman, you can apply to any of their pathways. If you are not districted to Frederick Douglass High School, you can still go there because they have a magnet program and it's the biomedical sciences program. If you have been in Miss White's class and like what you're learning from her, this might be something you're interested in. It is all done through Project Lead the Way. You can find out more about that at their site. Carter G. Woodson Academy is for males in grades six through 12. If you're interested in a curriculum teaching core standards through the lens of African-American history, culture, and culturally responsive teaching, then you might wanna apply for Carter G. Not only does Fayette County have specialized academic programs, they also have career and technical education opportunities. These next few programs that I'm gonna talk about actually do not use the application that I sh um, showed you at the beginning. They have their own separate application processes. So make sure that you contact them or visit their site for details. The first one is Locust Trace AgriScience Center. And I believe you can start applying for this in October. If you want to know more about Locust Trace, we have an expert right here at Leestown, Miss Myers. Many eighth graders are taking a year-long agri-science course to prepare them to go to Locust Trace. If you're in sixth or seventh grade, you might be interested in that, and you would want to talk to Miss Myers about taking her class as an eighth grader. We also have two technical schools in Fayette County. They have one application site, Southside Technical Center and Eastside Technical Center. Southside has all of these different programs, electrical technology, welding technology, engineering and electronics. They also have healthcare related um, fields. So dental hygiene, nursing, respiratory care, Farm, pharmacy tech, surgical technology, lots of opportunities there for you as a student. Eastside Technical Center has a different set of programs, automotive technology, collision repair, cinematography, law enforcement, lots of different options there. The best thing about Locust Trace, Southside and Eastside is that you don't go there full day. So even if you apply or go to Bryan Station or Dunbar or Lafayette or Henry Clay, you can still be bussed over and go to the technical school to get some of those um, certifications. We also have the Learning Center in Fayette County, and there is a separate application. It provides a nurturing environment for at-risk at students, and it's based around career-oriented exploration. So it's preparing you for life and gives you a chance to see what careers might be best for you. Fayette County also has the Stables. The Stables is located at the Kentucky Horse Park. It's housed at the Cent Central Kentucky Riding for Hope. And if you want more information about the Stables to see if it's right for you, you could contact their program director, Rachel Baker. 
Now you're probably wondering, what do I need to do now? I've learned all about uh, my dream career. I've learned about college opportunities. And now I've learned about high school opportunities. Well, you're gonna wanna go home, talk to your parents and think about what is it best for you to apply. If you're an eighth grader this year, we here at Leestown, we recommend applying for several different programs, anything you're interested in. If you are an eighth grader this year and you need help with applying, you can talk to your counselor, Mr. Gillum, your administrator, Mr. Miller, some of your eighth grade teachers, or V. Pryor, who is the FCPS Special Programs Manager. We hope you've enjoyed our career night.